Would you actually bury bodies? Would they bury bodies? Would they bury Japanese bodies? We we carry we, uh, 100 and some odd we killed at one spot, and we had to get a bulldozer there to, to dig a little slip trench and put the mud on top of them because it stunk so bad. Did you see that? Yeah, oh yeah, it stunk up the whole place. We had to get them over there. You know, with the sun beaming down, and it was terrible. When you when you went, um, um, oh yeah, when you you killed those guys with the hand grenade, were you were you scared? I mean, suppose the grenade hadn't gone off. What were you feeling when you? I had that M1 ready. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. But you would have had to take on three guys with a machine gun. Well, I figured I'd get one or two of them. <laughs> well, there's three of them. I said, well, the explosion will get them, or somebody will hear it and come running. But they didn't. Were they surprised? Uh-uh. Was that... Um, oh, you mean the Japs? Yeah, the Japs. Yeah, I imagine they were. <laughs> When you went over there to get the machine gun, were you by yourself too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just like dragged it quickly back to your hole? Uh, I'd look to see if they had a pistol among them and they didn't have a pistol, so I just took off. I didn't, I didn't take no rifle or anything like that. But guys often did take, what other kind of souvenirs would they take? Oh, I could, I could, I could take a, a rifle and go out to the ships and a beach and get a hundred dollars for it <laughs> and uh, a food, canned juice and all that stuff. We'll take flags too? Yeah, oh yeah, they take, yeah, they take anything. Because it was considered like a war trophy. So yeah, oh yeah. Take home. yeah. Um, now after Tinyan, and that's where you got the machine gun? Yeah. So, uh, was it easy to disassemble, by the way? Uh -uh. It was difficult. How'd you figure it out? Could it put no, it in your pack? No, no problem at all. Just took it apart. Was it heavy? No, it wasn't that heavy. Um, so then, what? Honey has a question. Uh, Mother has a question. Okay. What about letters? How about mail? Did you get mail? Yeah. Or you had to wait till you got back to Maui? No, no, the mail, the mail, mail it, oh, on the islands. Oh, on the islands. No kidding. Tell us about that. What would you I had to go get them. I had to go to the division headquarters. They'd call up and say, you got mail here, and I, I'd go over there and get it. Who would write to you? Yeah, who would you get letters from? And what well, I got you? letters from Jean, Pat, my mother, my aunts. Yeah, my aunts used to give me $2 a piece. <laughs> my dad's aunts. They would send you. They'd send you money. Yeah, two dollars, two dollars. Aunt Rick indeed. Two dollars every time I got a letter from him. Two dollars, <laughs> two dollars. Were you happier to get the letter or the two dollars? Oh, I was happy to get the letter. See what was going on. They didn't write much. It's just a few little lines. But your mother wrote every day, huh? Yeah. Did your mother write a lot? Literally every single day she wrote? I think she did, Anza. Mm -hmm. And she went to church every single day, didn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah. What did she do? She prayed. <laughs> she wouldn't take the meal from the, the, <laughs> the inspector, the gas line van. Meter. The so meter. one day... So one day a uniformed guy comes up to the house on Chippewa Street, right? Yeah. And he's got a uniform on. And, and she tries to give her something. Yeah. And what does she do? She wouldn't take it. What, what did she think it was? She thought it was a telegram. What was it really? What was it, huh? It was a gas bill. <laughs> In those days, meter readers were uniforms. Right. And yeah. they so in those days, the like meter, telegraph. Yeah. So it was the yeah. They looked like the telegraph, telegraph people who were alerting you, giving you the first bad news that your son was dead. So she wouldn't take the bill. 
as it turns out, it was the gas bill, right? Yeah. She told you that story when you got back? Yeah. <laughs> she was probably... She told in, you, didn't she? She was probably in hysterics. Huh? She was telling us about it. Yeah. I, um, did she write a little more? And where did you keep those letters once you got them? How did you keep them? How did you hang on to them? I don't remember. I don't remember. Hmm. But you well, saved them. them. Yeah. You brought them home with you. Got them home. Yeah, I know. Were there ever newspaper clippings? In yeah, she used to send a, a local paper. Redemption had a local paper. And then she she wrote the general to get me out. When did she write the letter to the general? Was when this was after that? I, I don't remember. I don't know. I, I found out as I got home. I'd have been embarrassed as hell. <laughs> so she wrote this letter, which we have. We don't have her letter, but we do have the general's response. What do you remember with the general? Who was the general and what did he what say? What did he say, Anna? You remember. Because she wrote saying she wants her son to come home. He's been through enough. What did the general say? Do you remember? I think it was card. I don't think it was Kate. I think it was Kate. No, it was Kate. Oh, Kate. Oh, Kate. Kate. Yeah, Kate. So what did General Kate say? He said he'd like to oblige her, but he, he, he can't. <laughs> he couldn't. And you were still needed elsewhere, huh? Yeah. The battle was still going on. Very sweet letter that she was so naive to think that if she wrote the general, they'd really send her boy home. She. Talk loud, hon. She sent him something. You remember what? Oh, yeah, because he thanked her. What did she send him? I know what she sent Oh, she sent him a rosary. <laughs> she sent him a rosary. <laughs> she sent him a rosary. Although I'm not Catholic. Yeah. She, uh, she, she was I'm treasured. So she hoped that, and, yeah. And I, uh, I went, she, he went to. He went to check on her son, and he was doing fine. And unfortunately, I would love to send him home, but I can't. Let's all pray that all this the boys can come home. Be over. Right. But you could tell from his letter what her letter had been to him. But we don't have her letter. It'd be great if it was like in the National Archives or something. It's possible because they saved all of that stuff. I don't think they destroyed it. So oh. somewhere. I know Fred. Fred would. He got to know the general's wife. He used to. He used to visit her all the time. I think she lived down in Florida. General Kate. Yeah, General Kate's wife. You would have been pretty embarrassed though if you knew she'd written that letter. Yeah, I probably would have been. It's very dear. It's a great story of the war that she writes this letter and thinks, and he takes the time to respond. That's what's extraordinary. I love that. That I love that letter. I love that whole story. So then, after Tin Yan, though, you went back to Maui. Yeah. And each time, would you go back to that same exact setting, that same exact camp? Same place. Uh, boy, we same happy tent. to get there. Same tent. Same tent. Oh, you had to be happy to get to Maui. What would you do there? Go to dances. I had a wave. I used to go go out to dances with this wave. I can't remember her name. You remember her name? I don't think I ever knew her name. Stella, I think it was. Stella. Stella. A what wave. Is? I don't know. We're making up the name. We don't know. But you could, a, a way of... A woman Navy officer, a woman Navy person. Would yeah, away, right? not an officer. No, not an officer. She was an officer. So you could dance and you could, um, the food was hot and you could shower. What was great about Maui? We were not getting shot at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you could, so the best thing about being in Maui was that you weren't getting shot at. Yeah, you were still alive. Each time you'd go to Maui, would you hope and think, 
well, maybe this is it. I won't have to go back. Or did you know you'd have to go back again? We knew we had to go back because they were still fighting out there. Yeah, we were on maneuvers, yeah. Yeah. We were still on maneuvers, uh. But Evo, we didn't know it was Evo, though. What What would happen? What kind of maneuvers did you go on? And you knew there was another island, you just didn't know which one. It was the same old stuff. We had to take the, take the, 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 the artillery, the big, Big guns, go out with them, land with them. But that, that was all. Just we had uh, what was it? Was uh, I can't remember where it was at now. We went over to Pearl Harbor, and uh, the LSTs were blowing up. Uh, and, uh, the Japs over there set the, set the, some of the boats on fire, some of the LSDs, and we had to sh wait for them to send more LSDs from the states or someplace. And one of them, uh, we had all jump in the water and swim to the one of the islands there in the Pearl Harbor. Now the next. Well, I don't remember the date we came back from uh, Kenyan, but it was uh, February 19th, 1945, we went to uh, Iwo. Wasn't it 1945? And was it, Scott, 1945, uh, Iwo Jima? Do you remember, as you were going there, how long did it take to get from Maui to Iwo Jima? How long were you on these boats? Quite a while. Like days? We No, about a month and a half. We uh, we don't go straight line, as a zigzag, and uh, we stopped at uh, the Mariana Islands, uh, Saipan, Tinian, and uh, we changed over from uh, LSTs to PAs, some of us. Mm -hmm. I went in a PA, and the rest of the crews, went, the gun crews went in the LSTs. Well, we happen to know where you spent part of the time on the way to Evo yeah. on a board ship. Where did you spend part of the time aboard ship? You were on your way to Evo. In the brig. Oh, he was in the brig. Isn't that where you were? No, that was, that was the one. We, you want to go way back now. Oh, okay. That was. Okay, uh, well, that wasn't on the I thought it was on the right. Tell, tell us the, the brig story anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we left the States and on in LSTs. And, uh, it was hot as hell, and I was on a, in a top bunk, and there were about three, uh, three, or three other guys that was in the top bunk, sergeants. They were all sergeants except me, and uh, they punched holes in the, the ventilator pipe. They? Oh. The sergeants. Oh. My. So I said, well, what the hell, I might as well do it too. <laughs> So I did it too. You're trying to get more air. Yeah, the ventilator, you can feel the pipe on over your sack. It was cold air going through. And you wanted some of it. Yeah, right, and I got some of it. <laughs> then I got put in a brig. The other three guys and me. And uh, we had to, the guard would take us to the lunch. Uh, and 
put us in a brig and take us out and take us out. Oh. So they take us out to make the invasion of uh, uh, the marshals. I said, well, why don't the hell you leave us in here? <laughs> we don't have to go. <laughs> but it, uh, it, was on, it wasn't on the record books. I checked my record book because I had access to all the office equipment and all. And it wasn't on my record, but they put us in the brig and uh, gave us uh, meals in front of the line and all. It was really nice. How long were you in the brig? Yeah. How long were you in there? I guess about two weeks. It, it, was, it wasn't a brig, it was a... Stealing air conditioning was serious. Something in the front was it of like the other boat. Was it like a cell? Was it like a... No, front end of a uh, LSD. Where the anchor chain was and all that baloney. But you couldn't walk around the ship. You couldn't no, get any no, air. No, no, no. And then they, <laughs> before that, <laughs> they had an air raid. Now this is about twelve ships out there. And they said, everybody, uh, go to the fantail. And you, you know what an LSD looks like. They got this big uh, place where they put trucks and all that other stuff. And uh, go to the go to the fan tail. Yeah, it's the most safest place. I said, here, all these trucks and and artillery pieces all loaded with ammunition. I said, you might as well go sit on a truck, let it blow up. <laughs> that was not the safest place. No, I. Uh, they let us fire our M ones uh, periodically. And uh, off the the, re the back of the boat when it when your know, LST was the last boat you you'd be back in the back. So I was back then. Uh, I had forgotten all about that. And I was shooting, and I said, "Look, look at that damn pelican, or whatever the hell it is." And he must have been a hundred yards out, and I picked up that rifle, and I hit that sucker, and down he went. <laughs> The, the, the sailor was standing right there. He said, man, you ain't going to make it back. <laughs> there ain't no way. It was an albatross. Yeah, albatross. <laughs> I killed that albatross with that one shot, that M1. And that sailor knows you don't shoot A sailor knows you don't, you don't shoot an albatross. Shoot an albatross. It's bad luck. But the sailor was But the, here's a boat going up and down, the damn bird going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to hit that sucker. And you were just playing around. Yeah. So you were just you were just kidding around. Yeah. Well, we're getting there. Oh, we better gosh. quickly get that, to. Uh, we have, luckily Steve has another tape. We have one more tape, so we're okay with Iwo Jima. Um, but uh, where when you kill the albatross, <laughs> where were you? What, what at what uh, point was that? Do you remember where you were going? Yeah, well, we're on, we're on our way to we were on our way to Hawaii. Oh, okay. We were going to Hawaii, and then we were going to the Maui, I mean, uh, Marshall Islands. Okay. And uh, we, we stayed on, we went and had a beer party on uh, Waikiki Beach. You could see the Royal Hawaiian Hotel right behind us. And then we left there and went to the Marshall Islands. And uh, we invaded there. That was... How come that's not on your list? How come Marshall Islands invasion isn't on the list? It is? Roy Namor? Roy Namor. Is a Marshall Islands? Yeah, Roy Namor is, yeah. Roy yeah. Is In the Marshall, Marshall Islands, Island. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So Roy Namor and Saipan Tinian and Eastern Marianas. Are all Marshall Islands? No, Marianas. Or Marianas. Marianas French. Yeah, uh, Iwo, uh, Volcano Islands is uh, Iwo Jima. Uh, Volcanic. That's the one closer to Japan. Japan. It's 700 miles from Japan. It's only 700 miles from Japan. Should Anything that had fly that would fly over there. The Any plane that they had would fly over to Iwo Jima. That's the reason for it's the reason they took the island. island. Right. Yeah, you that's know the what you never did answer what that uh, what the terrain was like on Saipan Tinian because uh, I know uh, you I don't remember. It was I know it wasn't that hard to dig. Beach. We used to dig uh, the holes and Was it easy to dig in a lot the of sand out on the beaches? No, no, no. Yeah, because that sand you always... Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
But this this was more like was it easy to dig? Oh yeah. Were there trees on those islands? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I used to leave a bayonet in all the trees that we on any island we we there may be someone right still there. I used to stick a bayonet in all the trees. <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't know. I said somebody might see them. Stick them in the tree up high. The most important thing was. All right, you ready? Well, okay. I'm all right in the camera. Daddy, would you get to guys when you, you know, when you kill them? Did you ever, when you, how many guys do you think personally you personally killed in the war? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell because uh, everybody's shooting. And I know when I, when I was, I'd see them get hit in the head and the head would bounce. I guess 12, 14, that I know of for sure. And that's how you could tell you'd, you'd see their head bound? Yeah, oh yeah. And move, uh -huh. that's how you knew that you, they'd been killed, shot. Yeah, a lot we shot uh, that was laying down there and they probably were dead already. We didn't know it though. We were where we were scared they were playing possum, so we'd, we'd go ahead and shoot them again. Quite a few, you know, through every time we catch a bunch of them in the an area. How close would you get to um, any body? We didn't get that get? close. We didn't get that close, Angela. Hundred yards, less than a hundred yards. Yeah, less than less than a hundred yards, most of the time. But there was some of them were further. But I, I could hit you at two or three hundred yards, easy. So there was no hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh no, type thing no, ever. not as long as they had that, that that gun. They had a they had the bolt action, Angela, and we had the nine shots. As fast as you could pull the trigger, nine shots would go off, and they had a. So once they fired that first shot, that that was a gula. They couldn't uh, they couldn't get out, you know, or move or anything. Because your guns were faster? It, nine, nine shots, and then you had to put another clip in. Then you had nine more, and as fast as you could put the clip in there, nine shots, nine shots. So the closest you ever were when you killed someone was when you threw that hand grenade. Yeah, and oh yeah. And you got the uh, machine gun that time. Yeah. Right. Now when you went to Iwo Jima, um, this was the one that you said getting there like well over a month just to get there? Something like that. We had a we had a layover in Pearl Harbor to get the LSTs that they had blown blown a bunch of them up. And then uh, to get them there to come pick the rest of the troops up. And then we we stopped at uh, Mariana Islands to, to switch over from some of the people who got out got back into the off the PAs into the uh, what they call them? What do they call that thing, guys? Oh, so that boat with the you drive off. The LSD, the LSD, LSD. I couldn't remember. So it took us a while to get there. <coughs> it was only 700 miles from Japan. Iwo so, Jima was only 700 miles yeah. from Japan, and you knew that. Yeah, oh yeah, we knew that. And it was supposed to only take six or seven days to invade the island. But uh, they were wrong. It took longer and a lot of more men got killed. Did you know um, when you were headed there where you were going? Not till we got past Mariana Islands. After we left Mariana Islands, they told us. Had you ever heard of Iwo Jima no. before? No, 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 no. What did they tell you about it? 
It's a small island. It's only going to take about six or seven days to invade it. But they were wrong. Um, did they? Uh, um, did they tell you anything else that would have prepared you? Could they have prepared you in any way for what you were going to have uh -uh. to do? No, they couldn't have prepared us. They were telling us it was going to be so easy that it wouldn't take uh, four or five days to invade it. Now, I've heard somewhere that they would estimate how many casualties they would be on a given uh, uh, invasion. I've heard that they estimate and they, they, would, they would tell them how many casualties they expected uh, on that particular mission. So and did they tell you, do you recall, like yeah, did they, re, do you recall how many um, casualties they suggested that there might no, be on each No, no, they said it was going to be easy. Hmm. So were you, you were not filled with dread uh, or, or fear? How did you feel when you were knowing you were going to this invasion? You'd already been through three. What did you think of as you were headed toward this place you'd never heard of called Iwo Jima? Once you go into Saipan, you were scared. Any invasion. Once you, we made that run into Saipan, it scared the crap out of everybody. That the guys that weren't there, they were, they were the only ones that were. Well, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> nothing. So tell us what happened. What was um, what was that day like? What happened? We got up early and had a good breakfast, and uh, we uh, loaded into the Higgins boats. What time of day was it? It was early in the morning, it's just like at light, and uh, they had a little uh, waves on at the beach. And I was I was in the third wave, and uh, the day was clear. Yeah, but it was, the water was uh, about six foot high uh, waves uh, right at the beach. And when our boat got got in there, it start, turned on the side, and uh, the water kept pushing it in, and the, and the cock said, "Get out! It's going to turn over." So uh, it was up on the beach already, and not on the beach, but uh, close to the beach. So we started jumping over the, the side of the boat onto the, the sand. And when I got up there, my cans got, my two, I had two water bottles on my belt. They got caught, and Robinson, I said, Robinson, push me. And he shoved me, and boy, I went boom into the sand. As soon as I hit the sand, the goddamn machine gun bullets started hitting down there. I mean, right in front of us. I said, this ain't no place for me. So I took off. I took off and got in closer into a big shallow. And uh, I said, let me stay here a while. So then I got, I got out and we got where the position was for the guns and, and, uh, Oh, well, we had lost, lost a lot of, a lot of men. We couldn't find them. <coughs> yeah, and uh, Tetmeyer, that's what the guy named Tetmeyer, wasn't it? Might be Tetmeyer. Yeah, Robert Tetmeyer. So I'm going down the beach, and uh, oh man, people digging foxholes and uh, under trucks and everything else, and and they shoving like mad. And there's about six, or eight guys under this truck. And I told Tetmar, I said, come on with me. We're going down to look, looking for some other people. So old Tetmar comes on out. He listens to me. He comes on out. And we go down, down about three or four blocks down the, the beach looking for the other people. And then we come back. All the guys were dead underneath the truck. <laughs> you see? And he, he invited me to his house for a birthday party. He said, you saved my life, you bastard. Come on to the party. So, well, we didn't go. But uh, 
Did you have a premonition?